Genesis Evolution is a very powerful programming software to program your Auto. It's capable of writing very complex programs with variables and mathematical functions. Uh, can, you can create fictitious faces uh, that you can that make programming ag aggregates and even five axis machines very easy. But at the same time, once you're familiar with the interface, it's also very easy to, to write a quick parametric program, even standing in front of the machine out on the production floor. But before we get into all the different features, um, which we'll do in later videos, we need to understand the interface and how to navigate it. There are three views, general, face, and 3D view. And each one has um, uh, different features and advantages. Um, the most common one though is general view, which you'll probably do most of your programming in. And um, in this view, you can see all five faces of the panel. The upper face, uh, the front, right, back, and left faces can all be selected from this pull-down window. Uh, but you can also, even easier, just click on a particular face to, to activate it and start um, programming on that particular face. But you have to select a face uh, that you want to program before you can write, write uh, uh, code or commands on that face. So um, if we look at the upper face here, or any of these faces, we can zoom in. We have our zoom commands here at the top. And if we zoom with the, with the window, then we can see each of these three faces um, and every face has a yellow circle and that indicates the XY origin for that face. Uh, and the XY origin all, is always the lower left corner of whichever face you're working on. So regardless of which face you're on, uh, then you're, you're, you know that your XY origin is always the lower left. And that's a, that's a CAD standard for, for most CAD software. So uh, back to our zoom commands, we can zoom back to extensions or the entire drawing. We can uh, zoom all, it gets a little bit larger view. We can zoom, uh, zoom out even further, zoom in. We can zoom to the previous window and back to extensions. Uh, pretty typical of most CAD software is to have this type of a um, type of zoom features. If we zoom in on a uh, very close and we can also use the pan command to pan around in the drawing and uh, just note that once you turn on the pan command you can see that uh, you know you're in that command by the uh, the, the, the uh, hand uh, the mouse pointer changes to a hand and to get out of that you have to go back and turn it off and then we can zoom back to the extensions so that's the, that's the general view. If we look at uh, the face view, then the face view gives you the, um, um, the again, the entire uh, part, or the, the entire part that you've got programmed. But it only presents one face at a time. You've got a, a view over here in this window which highlights the face that you've clicked on so you can stay oriented as to which face you're actually on. You can see the, the right face highlights, the back face highlights. But then in this window, uh, it presents you with that face straight on, and only that face. So it's particularly useful if you're programming on a horizontal edge and, per and programming horizontal routing or drilling, uh, because you're, you're then presented with that face straight on. And again, your origin is the lower left, and regardless of which face you, that you're on, your x um, uh, axis is always left to right, your y axis is up and down, and Z is in and out of the screen. And Z penetration into the face is negative. The, the face of the panel is zero and into the face is negative. So any positive Z values are above that face or outside of it. So back to the upper face, as you can see, we're, we, can, we can see all of our um, uh, machining commands straight on and it just makes it easy to isolate a particular face in the face view. If we go to the 3D view, then let's change back to the um, to the upper face. Let's start here, and you can see the the machining commands from the upper face, and you've got a couple of different um, settings here. You can click on this icon; that gives you an isometric view of the part. And we can go back and realign to the face and see it head on. A really useful um, feature of the 3D view is is checking your depths. Of your, for your programming or drilling or routing. If you want to see if you accidentally programmed something too deep, if we click on the front face, then we can see 
all the machining commands from the from, from the top face and see how deep they are and if you don't see the programming on from the from the front face or from the top face when you go to the front face view then just click on show face workings and that'll turn on all the machining commands regardless of which face they're on so it's very useful to be able to tell how deep you may have gone uh, for example, if we program something too deep, let's say that uh, uh, on this hole here, we've got a, a depth of minus uh, half inch. Let's say that we had inadvertently left out the decimal point. It's easy to do. Can't see it here. In the, in, the, in the general view and in the face view, you don't see anything in the Z depth. But when we go to the 3D view, um, once we go to the... Um, the isometric view, then we can see right away that that hole is too deep. And we also have another way of looking at um, at the um, the Z values or the Z depths in the 3D view besides this um, isometric view, and that is to use the rotate or orbit. And to turn that on, then just click and drag with the uh, the left mouse button. And as you click and drag around, you can change the the uh, the angle of the part and see it from any angle. That's a quick and easy way to tell uh, what your what the Z depths are. Now, just incidentally, this drill having a five inch depth, um, rest assured that the the machine, the optimizer, would would catch this when we went to save the program. It's not capable of drilling five inches deep, so an, another error message would have come up. But this just gives you an example of how you can see um, inadvertent Z errors uh, when as you're writing your program. So we'll go back to the general view. Um, just a couple more things about the interface. Um, with the, the toolbars at the top, there's a lot of very familiar commands that you see in other Windows programs like open and a new program or new file, open and save. Um, there's some, some new commands which we'll get into the, the specific ones um, in later videos, but you also have cut, copy and paste, um, delete, and also they call it cancel, but this is just an undo. It undoes the last, un, undoes the last command. And then you have, we looked at the zoom commands uh, just, a, just a moment ago, as well as the pan command. Uh, all the other toolbars here are specific commands to, to evolution, and we'll get into those in later videos. But um, a few more things about the interface. On the right side of the screen are different machining commands, such as drilling, uh, routing, or milling, as it's called. And once we, um, once we start with milling, you know, with milling, we, we set a tool number uh, a depth and where to start and then from there we either go to arcs uh, and have many different arc commands or straight line or linear milling and we'll get into these commands as we go along we also have grooving for saws and we have some special commands for ovals and ellipses and things like that and in this window we see the actual line that we're in the program that we've selected for example, you can see here that this um, drill command here is highlighted in, in the pink. So we can see its X, Y, and Z coordinate. Here's the one that we uh, left the decimal out. We can just double click on it, edit it, add the decimal, and change that. But we can see the actual line that we're on and all the coordinates or parameters for that particular line. If we click on a different line, for example, this, um, this line of a route of the toe kick, then we can see its X, Y, and Z coordinates. We can click on um, any of the commands or any of the lines visually to go to it. We can also navigate over here by using the arrow keys and clicking and, uh, or using the arrow keys to move up and down inside the program. And you also have, um, you can use these commands to go to the last working or last line of the program to the first line and step through line by line. So you've got a lot of ways to navigate. Typically the simplest way to get to something is just to click on it into the program. And, um, and with, with your commands spread out like these are, it's, it's pretty easy to click on. When things are really close together, you have to be more precise. And at that point, sometimes you may choose to go over and click on um, some of the commands down below in the, in the code window or navigate at the top. Um, either way. So you've got several ways to, to navigate around in the editor. So that's all we'll do in this video. In the later videos we'll, we'll start looking at each of the individual commands and how to, how, to, how to program drills and routes and things like that.